Life as we know it has forever changed. She shattered the glass ceiling. She became world's champion. She finally let herself feel the emotion. Once upon a time, Tessa Blanchard was one of the biggest prospects and hottest commodities in wrestling. She dominated and conquered women's wrestling and even crossed over into wrestling men in intergender matches. She made history by becoming the first ever female world champion of a major wrestling promotion winning the Impact Men's World Championship at the young age of 24. Her precocity could not be understated. She was a genuine once in a lifetime talent that had the potential to be the greatest women's wrestler of all time. At the peak of her career, if she was a free agent, she could have gone to either AEW or WWE and would have been the flag bearer for women's wrestling in either of those companies for decades to come. However, none of that came true or will ever come true, as Tessa has fallen from grace and has been ostracized by all mainstream wrestling companies. But how did Tessa go from one of the most compelling and over acts in wrestling to one of the most hated and detested wrestlers in wrestling today? Is this the case of cancel culture going too far and robbing an innocent woman of her dreams? Was it the case of a woman getting what she deserved because of alleged racism, backstage bullying and bad attitude? How did Tessa Blanchard fumble potentially being the greatest women's wrestler of all time? Tessa Blanchard was born in 1995 in North Carolina. She was born with greatness in her blood as she was the granddaughter of Joe Blanchard, who was a mid 20th century wrestler who won various championships in different territories. Tessa's father was none other than the legendary Tully Blanchard, who was a member of one of the most influential and impactful factions in wrestling history, the Four Horsemen. Unfortunately, Tully and Tessa's mom split up when she was four years old and Tessa went to live with her mom. But the wrestling influence was still very heavy on her as her stepdad was Magnum T.A was a championship title holder in the NWA. Clearly, wrestling was a very big influence on young Tessa. However, to the contrary, she did not have an interest in wrestling growing up. Instead, she was passionate about musical theater and acting. She was also on the track team throughout school. After she finished high school, she had family issues, so she stopped communicating with her family and left home to attend college. She worked at a nightclub to support herself and started to hang out with a rougher crowd. However, all of this changed when she attended her father's induction into the 2012 Hall of Fame. Right then and there, she was hypnotized by the aura and grandeur of wrestling. But she kept it a secret and she decided to start training to become a wrestler, unbeknownst to her whole family. Eventually, she told them though. Tessa was trained by George South and one of her classmates was Cedric Alexander, who is now in WWE. Not long after she started to train and was wrestling on the independent circuit, she tried off with WWE but unsurprisingly, she did not make the cut, seeing that she didn't have enough skin in the game. But that did not deter her and she pressed on. From her very first day in wrestling, she always had the pressure of having the Blanchard last name, considering the lineage of greatness that preceded her. This turned out to be a blessing and a curse. It was a blessing because her name got a widespread recognition and it got her in certain positions that she wouldn't have made it to if not for her surname. However, her name was also a curse because it caused women's wrestlers to be jealous of her in the locker rooms. These women's wrestlers tried to stifle her growth in any way possible, especially in her early days. Her trainer George South even said this, other women were very mean to her, anything they could do to break her. Because of all of this, Tessa had to develop a thick skin and become more abrasive than she actually was. She had to make her name on the independence and work twice as hard to prove that she wasn't in the spot that she was in because of her name but because she deserved to be there. And she did just that and she built her name to a point where she was undeniable. Tessa showcased her skills and talent in Lucha Underground, Shine, Shimmer, Rise Wrestling, Women of Wrestling, Stardom and much more and she won a myriad of championships in these various promotions. She proved that she was clearly a force to be reckoned with. Due to her exploding on the independence and in Japan, she got the chance to wrestle again in WWE, having a few matches in which she was a jobber in NXT. However, she got a big break when she was included in the inaugural Mae Young Classic in 2017. Unfortunately, she lost in the first round to the eventual winner, Kairi Sane. Despite this, commentary made sure to make it a point that she was a Blanchard, and this garnered even more interest in her. Impact definitely saw all the buzz that she was generating and they decided to sign her to a contract. Impact Wrestling strapped a rocket onto Tessa and pushed her to the moon. A few months after her debut, she won the Impact Knockouts Championship, which is the top women's belt in Impact Wrestling. She dominated the women's division and was drawing more and more eyes to Impact Wrestling, which made her a massive asset. Tessa was a true student of the game and a wrestling prodigy, and she knew how to connect with the fans as well. 
She had a natural instinct for resting and just had that it factor. She had the type of resting prowess and aura that can't really be taught. All of this coupled with her insane resting ability made her an unstoppable force. She also had the right look and charisma to match. She was a dynamic worker that showcased a complete range of crisp and compact offense. She was also incredibly strong and intense and worked very stiff, which is not something that is commonly seen in women's wrestlers. She was also incredibly over with the fans. She had a case to be called the best women's wrestler in America at this point. She was so good in fact that she even started wrestling against the men of impact in intergender matches. Intergender wrestling is definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but Tessa Blanchard was able to perfect the art of intergender wrestling in such a way that it looked very believable. She never looked out of place in intergender matches, and the way that she told stories in the ring against the men of impact really piqued your interest even if you are not a fan of intergender wrestling. While going toe to toe with the men, she proved that she was a generational talent. She was the real deal and because she was constantly resting men, her babyface momentum was growing as she was the underdog all the time and fans rallied behind her. This perfectly coincided with the women's wrestling explosion at that time, seeing that all of this happened in the same year that Becky Lynch had won in the main event of Wrestlemania. Becky had proved that given the chance, women in wrestling could be massive draws and Tessa was doing this but just on a smaller scale. Tessa Blanchard even drew comparisons to the late great WWE Hall of Famer, China, who was a trailblazer in her own right with regards to intergender wrestling, as she is the only female wrestler to win the WWE Intercontinental Championship. In intergender matches, China unfortunately was not a very good wrestler, but Tessa was, and she made her intergender matches captivating and gripping. The way in which Tessa took intergender wrestling to a new level was testament to how much of a truly special talent she was. At this point, she was on top of the world and it seemed like in no time she would end up in AEW or WWE. She was one of the hottest wrestlers in the industry at that time and was simply destined for a bigger stage. Everyone knew that once her contract was up, in Impact, it was not a question of if she was going to join AEW or WWE, but a matter of when. Whether she joined AEW or WWE would work either way because the storytelling possibilities that were present in each company were written on the wall and were very promising. In the case of AEW, she already had made a good impression on the AEW fanbase when she won her women's four-way match at All In, which was the show that was the precursor to All Elite Wrestling. Her father, Tully Blanchard, was also working in AEW at that point, so she would have fitted seamlessly under the learning tree of her father. But the biggest reason of all that AEW would have hired her in a heartbeat is that she would have been the perfect candidate to launch the AEW women's division. When AEW was in its infancy, the women's division was seriously lacking in star power and credibility, and Tessa Blanchard had the perfect profile to be the face of the AEW women's division, seeing that she was young, hungry, and damn good at her job. She would have brought a sense of much needed legitimacy to the AEW women's division. In the case of WWE, she would have had great successes there too, as there were so many money matches to be had. She could have feuded with any one of the four horsewomen of Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, Bayley, or Becky Lynch, because quite honestly, she was on the same level as them in terms of talent. One feud that would have been especially intriguing is if she were to feud with Charlotte Flair, seeing that as well as Tessa, Charlotte is also the daughter of a former four horsemen, as Charlotte is the daughter of Ric Flair. Both of them are feisty individuals who have supreme wrestling skills and there would surely be a lot of money in that match. The possibilities were quite honestly endless. The world was Tessa's oyster and her momentum just kept on snowballing. She was even in the blockbuster film Fighting With My Family as a stunt double for the main actress. This was an excellent opportunity for Tessa because she was able to rub elbows with very important people like Dwayne The Rock Johnson as he was one of the producers of the movie. <laughs> Tessa was on a roll and was inevitably heading for the stars. In Impact, she kept wrestling with the men and she even earned herself a shot at the Impact Wrestling World Championship at Impact's Hard to Kill pay-per-view 2020. This was a truly groundbreaking and game-changing move as there had never been a female wrestler to hold a men's world championship in a major wrestling company in wrestling history. This was a ballsy and progressive move by Impact and helped to bring a lot of attention to the company. Tessa was in that position because she proved that she can more than hold herself against men and she was also white hot at this point. She deserved to be the Impact World Champion and everybody was rooting for her. It seemed like everything was falling into place and the stars were lining up so perfectly for her to enter into wrestling legend. But then, just one day before her match to challenge for the Impact World Championship, her world came crashing down. On January 11, 2020, Tessa tweeted, Hey women, 
try supporting one another. Cool things happen. This tweet ultimately backfired on Tessa as Alison K, someone who had worked with Tessa in the past, quoted her tweet by accusing her of spitting in a black woman's face and calling her the n-word in Japan. What made the situation worse for Tessa is that a myriad of women's wrestlers like Shanna, Chelsea Green, Rebel, Gigi Dolan, Isla Dawn and Renee Michelle corroborated this story as well as also accusing Tessa of backstage bullying and blackballing other women's wrestlers. But most importantly, La Rosa Negra, an independent women's wrestler, tweeted out that she was in fact the victim of Tessa's racially charged barrage while on tour with Stardom in Japan in 2017. La Rosa Negra even hopped on a sit-down interview to talk about this incident. After these online accusations against Tessa surfaced, Tessa tweeted out, Not true. That's my statement and the most attention I'll give it because of how ridiculous it is. She quickly deleted this tweet but it didn't matter anyway because by this point, the internet had already cancelled her and rightfully so. However, Moose from Impact Wrestling came to Tessa's defense by questioning the timing of the tweets considering it was the day before her world title match. Tessa also did have a history of backstage issues because of her perceived bad attitude. Back in 2017, when she was dating the one and only Ricochet, she reportedly had a confrontation with him in the performance center and this led there to be backstage heat, which led to WWE becoming sour on Tessa, causing them not to offer her a contract. She was known for being a headache backstage and difficult to work with and these attitude problems turned out to be self-imposed stumbling blocks in her career. Amidst all of this controversy, the show had to go on and this brought us to Tessa Blanchard vs Sammy Callahan at Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill pay-per-view on January 12th, 2020. This match was shrouded in a hue of negativity considering all that happened the day prior. Impact was in a really tough position for this match because they had cultivated a really, really good story with Tessa and had built her up for a very long time to eventually become the men's world champion. But at the same time, she was being accused of some very serious things by quite a lot of people. And even though it was her word against theirs, the fact that so many people came out and effectively said the same thing was damning. Impact Wrestling ultimately chose to pull the trigger on Tessa as planned and crowned her as the Impact Wrestling World Champion, which now officially meant that she was the first ever female to hold a men's world championship in a major US promotion, which was a humongous feat. But her world championship win will always leave a bitter taste in wrestling fans' mouths because of the circumstances in which she won the belt. After the match, she was in tears and had this to say. Nobody, nobody in this life is perfect. We're all human. And it doesn't matter what you say about me. It doesn't matter what you call me. I've got one of the strongest minds that I've ever known. After the match, Tessa Blanchard hopped onto Twitter and decided to double down and she said this. Over the last week, I have been accused of calling a fellow wrestler a racial slur. To read this allegation has been personally upsetting. To be clear, I absolutely did not use that word. That word is not in my vocabulary. That word is not in my heart. Racism is not in my heart. She said this among other things, but once again, it was just a little too late and the more she doubled down, the more fans went for her and lost respect for her. Tessa Blanchard honestly handled the situation quite poorly. Now obviously, we can't say for a certain fact that Tessa did and said all the things that she was accused of, but from the amount of people who came forward saying the same thing, the stories are most likely true and Tessa may just be flat out lying. What Tessa should have done was take responsibility and accountability for her actions and admit to what she did wrong and apologize for it. Maybe it would have not fixed the situation entirely, but it would have been more respectful and honorable for her to do so. If she had apologized for what she had did, who knows where she would have been in the wrestling industry today. Her title run already started on a bad foot, but what made things infinitely worse was that not long after she won the title, the pandemic hit. Because of this, Impact Wrestling temporarily was off the air. And since Tessa's husband and fellow wrestler Daga stays in Mexico, she was staying with him when the pandemic first struck. However, when Impact got back on the air, they requested Blanchard to send in promos from Mexico, but she refused to send these promos in for some odd reason. There were then some attempts to get Tessa to return to the US amidst the pandemic and drop the title, but Tessa also refused to do this and reportedly requested $150,000 to go through with it, which is quite honestly outrageous. At this point, Tessa's deal was about to expire in a couple months, so Impact decided to cut their losses, strip off the world championship and fire her from Impact. Once again, Tessa's bad attitude and questionable character got in the way of her blessings. It's funny, 
Sometime after she got released, she tweeted out, show up for work. And in response to that, I tweeted a meme at her, making fun of the fact that she's tweeting this, but actually did not show up for work in Impact, which led to her being fired. And guess what? She blocked me. I mean, was I even wrong? And I mean, <laughs> folks, where's the lie? The way Tessa Blanchett fell off from prominence is quite honestly astounding. She had possibly the biggest fall off of wrestling of all time, considering that she could have gone down as a legend in either AEW or WWE if things had gone smoothly. But after she got released, nobody was willing to hire her, not only because of her alleged racism, but because of a lengthy track record of backstage issues and attitude problems. AEW and WWE saw her as more of a liability than an asset. She did end up wrestling in a few independent promotions, but no offers were on the table from WWE or AEW. Despite this, there was still a demand for Tessa as fans wanted her to come back and constantly speculated about her arrival in AEW or WWE. Tessa fueled these rumors as various pictures came out with her training with the likes of Sasha Banks, Bayley and Dustin Rhodes. Also, during AEW All Out 2021's Women's Casino Battle Royale, briefly, there were chants of We Want Tessa in the crowd. This just showed that even though no one wanted to hire Tessa, she still had some clout left in the wrestling world amongst the fans. In October of 2021, Tessa got a second chance in the wrestling industry when she was made to be the face of the relaunch of Women of Wrestling, which entered into a multi-year distribution agreement with Viacom CBS. This was absolutely massive seeing that AJ Mendes, formerly known as AJ Lee in WWE, was the executive producer and color commentator of the show. And the total number of streaming subscribers that Viacom CBS had across all of their networks was around 47 million viewers all over the world. This gave Tessa Blanchard the biggest platform of her career. Fans were bashing Women of Wrestling for allowing Tessa to be the face of the company and this led to Tessa deactivating a Twitter account. Tessa was known at this point for having nuclear heat amongst the wrestling fans. She leaned into her reputation and started using nuclear as her new tagline. She indeed was nuclear because in one of the early Women of Wrestling episodes, she blocked the oxygen supply of one of the audience members. What a menace. I need air. Oh, breathe, Hang on, I minute. can't breathe. But not after too long, Tessa Blanchard pulled the Tessa Blanchard and she somehow screwed it up due to her backstage antics and attitude. Tessa Blanchard was a coach at Women of Wrestling and reportedly, she cut a promo in which she absolutely tore apart one of the students and the other trainee spoke up against it. And just like that, Tessa was relieved of her duties in Women of Wrestling and left the company before she even got her second run in wrestling underway properly. Even though it is not completely known who was in the wrong in the situation, the fact that Tessa was involved just once again proves that she is not good for the overall backstage morale. She's like a cancer to the locker room, kinda like CM Punk. It's unfortunate that someone as well-rounded, talented, and truly special floundered their potential due to their attitude. It just goes to show that you could have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have the right attitude and mindset, then it's useless. Nowadays, Tessa Blanchard doesn't wrestle very much, as only small independent promotions are willing to hire her. She's currently enrolled in college seeing that there is no true future for her in wrestling. It's such a shame that she fell so short of the mark due to her attitude problems, because she could have been the greatest woman's wrestler of all time. Thank you very much for watching the video, please like, share, comment and subscribe. But anyway, goodbye you jobbers.